There is a ton of talent in this house, and uh, it's awesome to see it being used for the glory of God. Some of you are looking at the screen, and you're like, say what? What's the title of this message? Yes, it's Mom, Can I Be a Witch? Or can we say Halloween Unmasked? How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? I'm going to dive right into this, so let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence because you are here. You promise to be here when we gather in your name, and you are here. Everybody just say that. You are here. You are here. Thank you for that, Jesus. We just ask that you would anoint these lips of clay one more time. May I be hidden behind the cross. Father, may your voice be heard today. May the Holy Spirit be heard today. And may you speak to us plainly. And Lord, we just pray that you would be honored by, by what is shared today. And I thank you that your word is powerful, that it will accomplish everything that you send it forth to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. amen. See, there was this conversation that uh, I overheard some time ago, it's been quite a while, in a department store between uh, uh, a mom and dad and, and their children, and it was around Halloween many years ago. They were in this department store looking at the Halloween costumes, which most of them were kind of scary and spooky. And uh, the little girl, these are Christians, they were raised in the church, they, they know God's word, they, they go regularly and they attend and they're a part, very much a part of the church. And uh, one of the little girl asked the mother, mom, can I be a witch? And the mother, uh, you looked at the dad and they just looked back and forth, the mom said, well sure, you can be a witch. So the little girl picked out the witch costume so she could celebrate and be a part of Halloween with all of her friends. And my question to you today is, and you don't have to answer me out loud, but can I be a witch? Ooh, I said you didn't have to answer me, but that's okay. Mom, can I be a witch? This message today is not a message to tell you what to do. This message today is not a message of legalism, or condemnation if you participate in Halloween. It's not that kind of message at all. But I believe that this message will help expose some of the foundations of Halloween and also that we can apply God's word to every area of our life and see if what we participate in is pleasing unto the Lord. I believe you're here today because you love Jesus. I believe that. I believe most of you are here today because you want to be more like Jesus. I believe most of you have gathered today because you want to know him more and you want to carry out his plans in this earth for his glory and your desire is you want to please him. That's why you're here. I believe that's the majority of us here. I understand not everybody has that desire, but I believe most of us do. None of us are perfect. None of us are, are, have quite achieved everything there is to achieve yet in our walk with Jesus, so we're still growing. Look at your neighbor and say, you're still growing. Tell them this, you look more like Jesus today than you did yesterday, so keep walking forward. Amen? That's the goal, is to keep walking forward. See. We need to make choices that are honoring and pleasing to the Lord. I think I've got this turned on. It's not. Oh, maybe I don't. Boom. Oh, there we go. Look at, look at the scripture. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I told my wife the other day that I think I speak too fast. And Tony, you said something last Sunday. You said, man, my head was spinning with all those scriptures. So I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. And I, I, I want to say this every week. If you ever want my notes, you can ask the guys or gals up there, and they'll give you these slides. I mean, it's, you can just take it and do with it what you want to do, but so you can have all the scriptures. You're free to have that. But this is what the Word of God says. My people, shout my people. My people. We are his people. We're followers of Christ. We are his people. He says, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, he's speaking to his people, because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, 
I also will ignore your children. How many would say that's a pretty heavy statement right there that God is saying? Because you disregard me, I'm disregarding your children. That is not where we want to be. See, we are destroyed. Some, some uh, translations say we perish for a lack of knowledge. So the, the, the idea here is we need to have more knowledge of God and his word. To know him more. When you were just singing songs a moment ago, can I say, you weren't just, it wasn't song selection Sunday. It's a time of corporate worship where we are magnifying the Lord. We are adoring him. And his, his word says that he comes and inhabits the praises of his people. That means he's here right now. That means he comes and he dwells. As we worship him, he shows up. Somebody say he shows up. And I'm glad he shows up. He wants us to know him more. You sang a song moments ago about being still. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I, I just repeat what was said before. There are times when we need to just be quiet, still our hearts, and just sit quietly in the presence of the Lord and in those moments of silent worship, if I could put it that way, God will speak to us. He will give us knowledge of his heart's desires for us and to us. Are y'all, wave at me if you're hearing me today. He wants us to know him more. This, when we sing songs, it's not just a, it, it's not like we're singing songs on the radio just to have fun. These songs are songs of ministry. We minister unto him, but he ministers unto us. And he wants us to know him more. Look at your neighbor and say, he wants you to know him more. Tell them that. We're destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Look at Ephesians 5. For once you were in darkness, once I didn't, there was a time when I didn't know Jesus. There was a time my family was so messed up and living in darkness. A lot of darkness. But somebody came and shared Jesus with us. And it changed the trajectory of our family forever. My children have never had to go through the things I went through as a child as far as not, not knowing Jesus. All they've ever known is a house that loves Jesus. Hello? And they, they're blessed by that. But once we were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Listen carefully. For the fruit of the light Consist in all goodness, say goodness, goodness. shout righteousness, righteousness. and truth. truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what pleases the Lord. That tells me it takes some searching. That tells me it takes some pursuing Him. That tells me it takes some time to get to know Him and know what pleases Him, and then continue to live a life that pleases Him. And verse 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. I hope this afternoon for just a few moments, I can expose a little bit of the deeds of darkness so that we can shine our light more brightly. Are y'all with me? That's his desire is that we shine brightly. See, facts, I think I missed one. Oh, it may not be there. Look at this. Americans spent on Halloween the last several years, 2019, almost $9 billion. Can I just take a, a leap of faith and make this assumption? And I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I would assume that Christians that spent, along with the rest of the, um, America, almost $9 billion on Halloween for costumes, candy, yard decorations... All of these things, can I tell you that I believe that part of that $9 billion was tithe money that belonged to God. My people perish or destroyed for a lack of not, that belonged to God. Do you think God is going to honor my life when I give to darkness what belongs to him? It's quiet in this church today. See, we need to understand, I, I think of that number and I think of, man, the missions work that could be accomplished, the churches that could be built, the missionaries that could be sent forth, 
all the work for the kingdom that could be accomplished if Christians just simply wouldn't give their money to this area. And you could, you know what? You can disagree with me all you want. That's not a problem for me. That's not a problem for me. Once again, I'm not here to convince you or coerce you or manipulate you to think a certain way. I'm just going to give you God's word and you let the Holy Spirit speak to you on this matter. But that's a lot of money that could have been used for kingdom purposes. Somebody say amen. amen. Little history on Halloween. I'm going to give you some information. These are the Druids. The Druids were bloodthirsty, wicked, evil people, and they were real people. This is not some make-believe uh, people. The, these are real people, okay? And much is believed that this is where Halloween originated. It was with the Druids and their festivals. They, uh, there's many references to the Druids in Greek and Roman writings in the 2nd and 4th century. People were frightened by them because of their human sacrifices and animal sacrifices. They would even sacrifice their own children. 2 Chronicles 28.3 even backs up this evil practice. Julius Caesar's commentaries uh, speak often about the Druids scorching people in numbers and sacrificing people. For example, Roman writers have recorded the Druids offered human sacrifice for people who are gravely sick or people who were expected to die in battle. You sacrifice them. That sounds kind of gory, I know, but this is the foundation. They had this guy called the Wicker Man. Anybody hear of the Wicker Man? Oh, one guy back there, yeah. Some, two people. The Wicker Man. This is the Wicker Man. He, he, he was filled with living men and oftentimes animals. They would fill him with these animals and with men, and they would be burned alive as a sacrifice. And the Druids would prefer sacrificing animals but, or criminals, but there were oftentimes that they would even, they would sacrifice innocent people just to fill this thing up and offer a sacrifice. Pretty wicked stuff. They believed that wicked spirits that had, had, had uh, there were wicked spirits that had died within the last 12 months and Halloween was the time that they would come back. They always say that this was the thinnest time between uh, the, the dark side, if you will, death, where you could go through and you could, you, could, you could deal back and forth with the dead and the living. They believed that this was the thinnest time of the year to do that. And they believed that they would have an opportunity for these spirits to come back into their homes once a year and return even into animals. People would wear costumes of animals and there would be fortune telling. They believed that the costume would disguise them so that these evil spirits would not recognize who they were. So this is kind of where we get the costumes and wearing them. Uh, Halloween is one of the most sacred days of the year for witches and warlocks. Other dates that are sacred for the occult are February 2nd, April 30th, August 1st, and obviously October 31st. The Druids would provide food and shelter to welcome back these evil spirits. This is kind of where trick-or-treat uh, kind of gets its place. If you did this, if you provided these food and shelter types of things, uh, it would protect you from evil from these spirits. Shelter and food was the treat that was provided. But if the spirit was not satisfied with your treat, then the trick would be upon you where the spirits would come and wreak havoc on your home, at times would steal your children, is just evil. I wanted to show a video today, but we don't have time to do it. If you want the link to it, I can, I can give that to you, provide that for you, of a former witch who will testify to, to these, these things even happening uh, in, in this day and in this hour, that this is the, the greatest time for magic, and it was the time when witches, kind of like they have their final exam, to prove that they can do what they can do in darkness. See, even with the knowledge that we do have about Halloween, Christians are still involved with the activities of, of this time of year. Many participate in it as if there are no consequences. I just want to throw something out for you. If you know something is harmful to you, like I started changing my diet and I'm eating more healthy, right? Because I found out some of the stuff I was eating was harming me. I have a friend who's battling cancer today, and the cancer that they call his cancer is actually, one of the names of it is fast food cancer. I'm not going through drive through McDonald's anymore. Hello? I, I mean, I, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I have knowledge of this, I can stay away from that, 
and do what is healthy for my body. Spiritually, there are some things that we need to refrain from to remain healthy spiritually and to be able to carry out God's plan for our lives. Would you agree and say amen? amen. Okay, I appreciate that. See, look at this. Leviticus 19, 31. Do not, this is God's word. This is not Jeff didn't write this down and say, I'm going to share this today so you'll believe what I say. No, God's, God's word. Don't turn to mediums or seek out spiritists. For you will be defiled, polluted by them. I am the Lord. What's he saying? I am the Lord your God. Don't go after them. Don't sacrifice to them. Don't get involved with the cold and witches and warlocks and Ouija boards. Hello? Because you will open the door. You will open the door. 1 Thessalonians 5.20, reject every kind of evil. See, what this says to me, and we're just not talking about tomorrow, but there are things we're faced with every day. There are thoughts that come into our mind that are evil that we've got to reject. Hello? There are theologies that are out there. There are, there are people preaching new, new ideas that do not line up with God's word. We've got to reject that and cling to God's word. Just some quick things. The jack-o'-lantern... Uh, it's told that old Jack couldn't enter heaven or hell, okay? It kind of, he was doomed to roam the earth. And they knew that Jack would be coming back around. Uh, he would be coming back around, so they would carve out evil faces and pumpkins to scare old Jack away. Witches, black cats, and bats are used throughout Halloween. Would Jesus celebrate Halloween? That's what, it's just a question. Would he do that? You speak of vampires. You have Leviticus 7.26 talking about people who who eat manner of blood, would Jesus do? Psychics, divination, observer of times, enchanter, consulter with familiar spirits are an abomination unto the Lord. Deuteronomy 18. Leviticus 20. Wizards, the soul that follows after wizards. I will set my face against that soul. Isn't it our, isn't it our goal to draw near to Jesus? So why would I let something, just even for one day, why would I participate in something that over a course of time could lead me farther from the Lord? That could open up a door to something else that might attach itself to me. Just a question. Witches, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, Exodus twenty two eighteen. 18. That's some pretty serious stuff. See, facts are facts regardless if we believe them or not. Truth is truth whether I want to cling to it or not. It simply is truth, and it remains forever. I want to talk about this guy just for a little bit, the Church of Satan. This is Anton LaVey. He's the, he's the founder of the Church of Satan. He was a musician. He was an author. He wrote the Satanic Bible. It's right here. I want you to see, these are all points and parts and pieces of the occult and attached to Halloween, this, this celebration. Look at this, the nine commandments of the Satanic Bible. It's interesting to me. The first one, Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Doesn't Christ say, deny yourself? Take up your cross and follow me. Not indulge yourself. But there's some things that Christ says you need to abstain from. Look at number five. Satan represents vengeance. Instead of turning the other cheeks, th th cheek, this is... Simply mocking the Bible. Because didn't Jesus say to turn the other cheek? I had a friend once, I was working in high school in a, uh, oh, what I, was a, I was a kind of a, a clerk and stock boy. And down in the basement, my buddy and I used to work there together in high school. And this young, this older man was running the, the stock area. And uh, my friend and he got in a fight one day. I mean, they got in a fist fight at work because we would do silly things. He would sit in a chair all day, and when he was up to go do something, I never did this. I never did this. When my friend would pour water on his chair, and you couldn't tell water was on his chair. Then he'd come and sit down, and his pants would be soaking wet, and he'd play tricks on him. And I would say, I didn't do that. He did that. Well, he found my friend doing something like that one day, and he punched him. I mean, punched him right in the face. And my friend just, who was a believer, just looked at him and said, hit the other one, hit the other one. And so he hit the other one. 
I didn't have the gumption. I would not have said, hit the other cheek. I probably would have just turned and, and ran away because I didn't want to fight that much. Hello? Jesus says to turn your cheek, right? Satan, he says, man, have vengeance. Do unto others. Go after them. Have vengeance upon them for what they do to you. Look at number seven. This explains a lot today. Satan represents man is just another animal. We're on two legs, but most animals, right, they're on four. We're a little bit smarter, but we're just an animal. Demeaning and lowering the fact that we've been created in the image of God. We've been created in God's likeness. We're not like the animal world. We are created in God. Look at your neighbor and say, you've been created in God's image. Tell them you look a little bit like God, because that's what the word says. Uh, number eight. Satan represents all of the so-called sins. This is another statement of mockery. And listen to what he says. Because all of these sins that you're told not to participate in, the scripture says to stay away from, they all lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. In essence, what he's saying, go out and do whatever you want to do. Make yourself feel good. If it feels good, do it. That is so opposite to the word of God. Hello? So, mom, can I be a witch? Look at what Anton LaVey says. He's dead and gone now. I pray that he gave his heart to the Lord before he died. I have no evidence of that. Listen to what he said. I am so glad that Christian parents allow their children to worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Because we begin to participate in this activity called Halloween. Hmm. Let God speak to us on that. I'm doing everything I can today just to encourage you simply not to open up a door that you don't want open. I remember when I was about 12 years old, I went to a birthday party with some, some friends. It was an all-nighter at a hotel. My mom dropped me off. And late at night, these guys broke out a Ouija board and they started calling forth spirits and calling, they were trying to call forth Babe Ruth and, and all kinds of, and just some, to be quite honest with you, some weird things started happening in the room. I just, I was smart enough. I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but I was smart enough to pick up the phone and call my mom and say, I think it's time to come home. I couldn't hang out with, with them because they were opening a door to the spirit world that was going to cause problems in their life. Are y'all with me today? See, you can't dabble in, in things and expect there to be no consequence from it. Halloween truly is not harmless, and God is serious about this. In Exodus 20, 3 through 6, you shall have no other gods before me. The worship team can come, and I'd love it if, you could, if maybe you could prepare that song still, if the worship team is here. You shall have no other gods before me. Say no other gods. If it's not a big deal then it shouldn't be hard to say no to. Whatever, whatever that lure is that's pulling us away from the Lord. My question is, do the activities and the foundation of this tradition, does it move us closer to Jesus? Or does it cause us to look more like the world and for there to be really the inability to tell the difference between light and darkness? He's called us to be light. I don't want to diminish my light, hear me carefully, by being unequally yoked with the world in such a way. It's, it's not worth it. It's truly not worth it. You should not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. I want to jump to this real quick so we're running out of time. my battery dead can you jump it or not up there are you able to make it go if not no worries I'll read it to you Ephesians 5 10 through 11 try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord take no part somebody say no part, no part. take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 2 Corinthians 10, for though we walk in the flesh, 
We are not waging war according to the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power. Listen carefully. There we go. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised up against the knowledge of God. And this is key for us right here. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. Every thought that wants me to, to, to give in to the world's desire. Every thought that wants to lead me further away from Christ. I have to take that thought captive. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Would you stand with me today? As I said at the onset, I'm not here to make you believe what I believe. I want the Holy Spirit to reveal to you through His Word what the Lord would have you to do in this instance and in all instances of those things that don't line up with God's Word. But the world says participate in and even churches are celebrating and practice. What is God saying to you? Can you bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment? I want anybody moving around, you young people in the back over here, just hang on just a minute. We're almost done. Just close your eyes and bow your heads just for a minute. I believe Jesus is calling us so close to him in this hour. And the enemy's trying so hard to pull us away. And if you hear the voice of the Spirit of God speaking to you today, saying, come near, come near. You're hearing him woo you closer. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I got this text from my 20-year-old son last Sunday, late afternoon. He said, Dad, just a reminder, God is calling us to a life of holiness. And he's serious about it. He says, be holy, for I am holy. You know what that means? Not everybody wants to walk that path. It's not okay, but it's okay. Which path will you walk? Do you want to walk in a path that honors God, or do you want to be compromised? And I believe you're here today because you want to, you want to honor God. I'm just going to turn it over to the worship team and give you an opportunity to be still before the Lord as they lead in worship. If your heart is hearing the Holy Spirit say, draw near to me, I want to strengthen you. I want to reveal more of myself to you. As they begin to worship, I want to invite you just to come to the altar and spend, just, before we leave, just to spend a few moments at the altar just talking with God and allowing God to talk to you. If you sense that this morning, would you step out now? You just want to spend some time with Jesus at the altar and let him minister to you. If that's you, just step out now. I know there will be many here who will pray with you and encourage you, but just respond as the Holy Spirit is speaking to you as we worship together.